Hey guys, Joel McKay here. Uh, I'm the director of product development here at Z1. Uh, today we're talking about Z1 off-road speed cleats, uh, which I developed for the uh, Titan and Frontier platforms. Tell you why we believe they are better than the alternatives out there and uh, talk to you about their advantages. So I've got a 2019 Titan Pro 4X, that's the truck behind me here. Um, bought this truck about a year ago. I use it as my daily driver. Um, I use it as a truck on a weekly basis, uh, either hauling a trailer, uh, hauling stuff in the back, um, uh, hauling a camper, uh, just general truck stuff. Um, after owning the truck and realizing that the Utilitrack system existed and what its advantages were, uh, I started using the factory cleats uh, fairly regularly and, um, and realized that Z1 Off-Road needed its own version. Um, I thought we could make one that was more low profile, um, actually uh, as strong as the OE cleats and gave us some key advantages that we'll talk about. So after I got my Titan and started using uh, the Utilitrack system on a regular basis, I, uh, I began with using this style uh, of the OE, of OE cleat. Um, it, worked, it worked well for most applications, uh, but if a few of the things that I noticed um, in using it was, first of all, it's very large. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't comfortable keeping these in the bed of my truck uh, for fear they may be stolen. So uh, trying to store them inside the truck had, be, had very limited options. I can put them underneath my rear seat. There's a cubby underneath the seat. However, having four of these down there, um, they rattle around. Uh, so that was annoying, didn't want to do that. Um, basically, I had to wrap them up in a bag and try to stuff them somewhere uh, where they were out of the way. Um, so in, in comparison, uh, the Z1 speed cleats are so small uh, that I was able to keep these uh, in my glove box, in my center console, uh, really anywhere I chose without, without issue. And this was before uh, Z1 had its off-road uh, bag which I now use underneath my rear seat. So in addition, a few of the other things I learned uh, were that while this has technically three uh, tie down options, uh, I've never been willing to use the side ones because when you connect a ratchet strap to that, uh, it very, very easily slides off. Uh, <clears throat> once you apply enough force, it starts to hold, but even then slipping it off is not, not too difficult. Uh, so I was afraid that my load would shift or I would hit a speed bump or pothole and uh, this would simply come loose. Uh, so I was always using this top uh, hole. So the issue with it was it is so far uh, from the actual point on the track where the load is applied. So when I'm strapping down a load uh, like two by fours, for instance, uh, where I can't put them on my tailgate because maybe they're 12 or 16 feet long. I need to strap them down flat. Um, I wasn't able to do like this because first of all, this was just too high. Um, it was higher than the two by fours themselves. And secondly, and we'll show you here shortly, when you ratchet strap this down, you start to pull on uh, the track itself and you can see the bed flex quite dramatically. So with all, of the, with all of those things in mind, uh, I wanted to design a cleat where the load that was being applied to the track was as low as possible. So uh, the clevis here that the uh, ratchet strap connects to, um, basically it just transfers the load to this pin. And this pin was about as close as I could possibly get it to the track itself. Uh, so if you compare that location to the location of uh, this right here, there's actually a 400% difference. So that difference is the same amount of torque that you're applying to these tracks. So if you're applying uh, 100 pounds of load, uh, that would translate into 4X multiplier at this point, uh, which you'll see in a minute has a significant effect. So another advantage of the small size is the simplicity of installing these. Um, they're very comfortable to hold in one hand. Um, any of the track locations that you want, you simply go to your spot, turn it to location, and then twist it in place. Um, the OE cleats uh, are not necessarily awful in that, look in that situation, but uh, they are so much more bulky that you have to uh, 
you have to basically find your location, secure it, um, and then figure out the figure out the torquing. Um, so here, let's see. <clears throat> Between the two OE plates, uh, I would definitely pick this one as the winner in terms of tightening it down. Uh, but neither are as simple and as easy as the D1 speed plate. So one of the advantages I mentioned uh, was the Z1 speed cleat's ability to handle uh, low loads, uh, such as two by fours. So if you have two by fours by eights or tens, no problem to just put the tailgate up and let them sit at an angle across your tailgate. Uh, if they're 12 foot long or even 16 feet long, uh, it's usually not what you want to do. Um, and so you'd put them in your bed like this, you'd want to strap them down. Uh, the Z1 cleats allow you to get enough angle uh, to actually hold the boards. Uh, the other advantage uh, that you'll see as we, as we do this demonstration is because the load is so low, uh, the movement on these tracks themselves is, uh, is reduced. So I'm going to tighten this down and you can watch that, that load. You can see them move uh, if you saw them flex some, but it really wasn't that bad. And now these boards are very much secure. Uh, I feel comfortable taking these, putting my red flag on the back and take them down the road. So we'll move to um, the next set of OE cleats and you'll see it's uh, not as good of a situation. Okay, so the first thing that we notice is that the height uh, is much is much more and therefore the amount of uh, force going down on the boards is naturally reduced. Also, because we're now creating this moment or this torque on the arms, uh, you're going to see that the actual tracks start to flex quite a bit more. You can see those bending in. Uh, I would normally ratchet strap down tighter than that, but this is my truck and I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. So this is holding the boards, but as you can see, not really. So I would not want to take that down the road. Um, let's do the last ones. You saw how much it just bounced back. This one uh, is an even worse scenario. So I had mentioned the opportunity to use these locations, which are lower, but not going to do that. Way too big of a risk in my mind for those coming off. So we'll do it like this. And there's really no point in even trying because uh, we're way too high for this to hold the board. Also, I'm not going to go anymore. I can hear, I can actually hear the bed starting to move. So that's as tight as I'm willing to go. And these boards flex freely. The same condition applies if you're hauling a refrigerator, uh, for instance, and it's vertical. And so your speed plates are here. You've got this really steep angle that goes over the refrigerator. The same condition would apply. So we wanted to show you guys uh, how much uh, load actually goes through a ratchet strap. Uh, we see a load rating of 200 pounds on the cleats. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, as I think we'll demonstrate, this load rating is clearly meant for the track system itself and the bed of the truck. Um, and you'll see in a second how much the bed flexes um, when you tighten it down. So we're gonna take a measurement from track to track and we're actually getting 61 and three quarters of an inch, okay? Currently we have nine pounds uh, of preload already on this just to get it tight. Uh, now I'm gonna tighten it down. You're gonna see how much load is there and then we can measure again. Okay, so we're currently at 245 pounds. More than the cleats are rated for, more than the truck is rated for, more than frankly I'm comfortable doing on my truck, but for you guys, I was willing to take the risk. We were at 61 and three quarter. We are now at 61 and three eighths. The bed moved three eighths of an inch. Uh, far too much, you're gonna see it flex back. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. way more than I'm comfortable with. So obviously it held, uh, the cleats had no issue doing that. They would have held uh, quadruple that amount. Um, 
but uh, that gives you an indication. That was ratcheting down pretty hard. I would normally probably do one click less, which would probably be around 150 pounds. But that gives you an idea of uh, the capacity of, of the bed, the cleats, and how much uh, force a ratchet strap applies. Okay, so let's talk storage of these cleats. Uh, if you're unwilling to leave the cleats in the back of the truck for fear they'll be stolen uh, or, or otherwise, um, you need to keep them inside the truck. So when I first got my Titan, uh, I had two car seats in the back that were permanently affixed. So I was unable to use the underseat storage, but assuming that's not your case, as it's not mine at this point, uh, you can use the storage Nissan provides you under the seat of the Gen 2 Titan. Uh, not all trucks in our category have this. Um, you lift up this panel here and then you have storage. Well, for the OE cleats, uh, they will fit in here, but uh, I learned, of course, very quickly that uh, having those in your truck uh, is very noisy. Uh, so, you know, you're forced to put them, wrap them individually in a rag or uh, our bag, what have you. Um, so when I uh, had the car seats in here and just otherwise, I'm able to hold all four uh, speed cleats. I, I normally use four, I have used more. I think I have eight total. Um, I'm able to hold all four in one hand. Uh, as a result, I can put these in my center console. I can put them in the glove box. Uh, and honestly, they're easier to get to than the rear. So I always kept them here uh, whenever needed. And of course, you have Titan boxes like I do. You can also keep them in your Titan boxes. Um, so just one other advantage of the Z1 Speed Cleat.